Hello, and welcome to the second episode of my series where I talk about Buxton's history and interesting things whilst I clean up the town. Now, I hadn't planned this second episode as I was busy on what was supposed to be episode two, but research for that video has been a bit more of a task than planned for my supposed one video a week plan, and it's a little too early in the series to give up on that just now. But luckily, whilst I was walking up to Goik Valley to film, I spotted something odd. Something I've walked past countless times in my life without even noticing. A concrete post. Now get it, it might not seem too interesting, but things like this always seem to have a purpose. So of course, I had to find out what it was for. When we look a little closer, the post has letters GPO carved into it. So it's not too clear to begin with, but as I made my way up the hill towards Goit, I kept finding grids on the ground of all different types, but one thing linking them all together, telegraph or telephone. There is a massive underground telephone line all the way along this road and grids to access it along the way. One of those being right in front of the post. Now the people in charge of telephone communications has changed a fair bit over the years. Present day, the lines are maintained by BT, British Telecom, who have run it since 1981. You can see on this grid, it has BT stamped on it. And this one has a T logo, which was used by BT from 1981 to 1991. Before BT, the people in charge were the post office telecommunications from 1969 to 1981. Before that was the General Post Office, who ran telecommunications in Britain since 1868. So that's the company who put the post up, that's GPO, and it is to do with telecommunications. But how exactly does this concrete post have a purpose? Well, these posts usually lie at joint between cables, or as a junction, as a physical indicator instead of relying on a map. There are multiple designs of these posts across the country. The one in Buxton here is rather modern and could have been built between 1936 and 1969. But there are a full range of designs, from just grates in the ground to concrete posts like ours, or even cast iron ones with royal markings atop. Most include a distance on the marker in feet and inches that ours doesn't include at all unless that's what these little holes were for. But it's a fascinating little history behind what's a very uninspiring lump of concrete. I'll leave a Google Maps pin of the location of Buxton's post. There could be more than just this one in town, so keep your eye out. I'll also link a website that has a post finder for the older cast iron versions. And of course I did clean up in this episode, not as much as I would like to, but I had no wheelbarrow. It was an unplanned video after all. But I did manage to get a full bag of rubbish walking up from Goit. I hope you enjoyed and uh, stick around for the next episode because it could be quite a long and maybe complicated one.